Well, good morning folks. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I think this could be one of the most important videos that I could make right now for you and for your family. So I hope you stick around to listen to it all because I think it could make a big difference for you and everyone else. I probably still have hay on me, hay on my shirt. So here's the deal guys, I have thought about making this video all morning long and I thought about different ways I could make this video and one way is to do it the way I'm just going to do it <laughs> and the other way would be very long and very involved and it still wouldn't get everybody touched in terms of everybody's individual situation. So I'm going to broad brush it. I think that that is the uh, best way to handle this because what I'm about to say you have to take if you want to and because you know opinions uh, and a quarter might buy you well no they won't buy you anything now honey have you seen the prices of everything good luck with that so <laughs> but what I'm saying can be taken and can be applied to any one person but everybody's life is different. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's finances are different. Everybody's health is different. And everybody's kids, oh my Lord, are different. So I'm going to make a broad point, And I hope it helps. So over recent years, within the last five to ten years, which if you look at Gabriel, Gabriel was 16. My boy, it's always in my videos. It, nowadays in my videos. You know, 10 years ago, he was just a kindergartner. He was just a wee little thing. So, you know, we talk to children when they're five, six, seven years old, and we explain things differently to them, or we put them in situations for them to understand things differently than we would say a 16 year old. Do we not? I think that's fair. At least we did. When we took on this lifestyle, we were very open with our children about potential hard times. I don't know how much I have talked about this in my 1,200 videos that I have here on YouTube, but I know that I have touched upon this subject several, several times. You know, homesteading before the next Great Depression. Other various videos that you've seen. Would You Starve series, Burn It to Learn It. So my children, my three sons, have been very well involved in understanding that, you know, mom and dad are doing these things because they want to have skill sets. They want to try to be as sustainable as they physically and financially can in whatever. So you go over these things with your kids, right? But you know, they're kids. You were a kid, I was a dumb kid. We were all dumb kids at some point, right? And here's the deal, if you're watching this video, nine times out of 10, you have not experienced the things that we are trying to press upon our children to understand or have an idea of or accept. Sorry, I, 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 you can't change my mind on that. There's no way in the world, even my Nana, who was born literally right at in the Great Depression era, that she probably understood the things that even her grandmother went through coming up through 1918, World War One, the beginning of the Great Depression. They're not going to have the same perspective, okay? So I'm going to say that, and my Nana's going to be 85 years old in December. She's got a better idea than me, and she's got a lot more stories, and she does have a lot more experience than we do, probably, overall. But even she has had it so good overall as an adult compared to folks a hundred years ago. So it's very difficult to say to young kids, kids, preteens, teens, you know, the Great Depression, Laura Ingalls, 
you know, you only get a cup of sugar a week to ration with. How are you going to eat beans every day? What if dad does this? What if dad that? You know, all of these things. To children, a lot of times, it's just talk. Even if you're on the bottom end of things economically, folks, I'm, I'm just going to say it, and I'm so sorry if I offend somebody. It's not my intention. I... I I have worked with children that are in the low income spectrum and you know, I'm telling you right now, they're still pretty well fed, they've got clothes, they eat Doritos, they go to school. I mean, I'm not saying that hard times don't exist in this modern age because we simply do understand that they do, but when you're trying to put it in the context of 1863, <laughs> it's just not the same. So here is my advice to you on this subject because this is what I have been thinking about over the last couple of days. I think about it often, but until you're sometimes really truly pressed to push certain things, we don't do that as parents or as adults. You know, we try to be responsible. We try to think about the big picture. We try to have self-reliant skills. We try to do all of these things, but you know what? At the end of the day, if we wanna get in the car and go to Dairy Queen and buy a dip cone, we probably could. You think that still is going to be here this time next year? I pray so. I hate to sound so negative, but what if in the near future that's not even an option? What are you going to do? <laughs> I have to use a butterscotch dip cone as my example because they're so good. My point is here, this is what I'm saying. I can use a simple example of something that is very easy for most people to go get and do, but that may not apply to you. That's why I'm saying it's impossible to talk about everything that is up in the air right now. Just understand that everything is up in the air right now. This is very difficult. You know from my previous video that my husband, we're still in a fluid situation, could very well be out of a job not by choosing, um, you know, in the next six to eight weeks, depending on how everything rolls out. That changes everything for my family. That changes everything for my farm. That changes everything between me and you. I have already warned you of this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please refer to the video prior to this. And by the way, before I continue, thank you for the overwhelming amount of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments. I mean, it could be in the thousands by now. Here, Instagram, Facebook, private messaging, emails, uh, just overwhelming. And we thank you. Believe me when I tell you, you're not alone. Yes, we are concerned. Yes, we are stressed. But we stay strong and we are staying true. And we thank you endlessly. So because of this, obviously, in the last week or so, conversations in our home have changed. If this has not affected you yet, it's coming. It may not be the scenario like mine, but it's coming because this is too big of a broad issue in terms of everything that we've seen in the, particularly in the last 20 months here in the United States. And I'm only speaking about the United States. I'm not even going global. You go global, we're in a world of trouble. No pun intended. But my point is there is no way all of these issues are touching this many important, valued, educated, essential people in this country, and it's not going to affect you. So here's what I'm going to say. You better figure out, let me put it this way, you better figure out how to pull little Johnny and little Susie tonight after dinner into the den and you make them aware of a lot of things that are going on. They may know some of this. Maybe you've already done this. Good for you. Had the conversation a lot. But you need to put action to it. And this is what I'm saying. I was already in the mode of telling James and talking with James. You know, we try to be conservative. We don't go on vacation. We don't, we're don't. we home on the farm most days doing things. We go to a reenactment, you know. We might go get a pizza or a dip cone. We're not living this wild high life out there, folks. My children overall, uh, as you know, are homeschooled. Um, and so they've, they've lived a really good home life, but we do have our conveniences. We have the things that are make life easier. You know, we have modern technology. We have all of these things. I'm telling you right now, you need to make them feel some pain. Did you hear me? 
you need to make yourself and you need to make them feel pain. Now, some of you are going to say, I'm already there. I sympathize with you, I understand. You need to sit down and go through all the things that you spend your money on every month and the things that you buy and figure out every way that you can to pull back. Some things are no brainers. Some things are easy. That's what I'm saying. This is where I could get into a list a mile long. Turning off the lights, pulling back the air condition, cooking always from home and scratch as much as physically possible. Do you have to have five side dishes with your ham? Maybe you just need two. You know, get into making your own pinto beans and cornbread. There are a million things I recommend to you to get some books. One of them I'm gonna show you here on this video, and I've made a whole video before on this book, the Tightwad Gazette. Yes, it's like 25 years old. It might be nice to read a book that tells you to do things before you had Google. Catch my drift here? Might be a good idea. She's got some great ones. It's one of my very favorite prized books. I've read the book three times. You can see I've worn it out. So my point is, you have got to pull yourself back. Everything that you can do to cut things in half, stretch meals, cancel that, do this. Do the things that are obvious to you first that you or your children will not feel any pain from. I'm not telling you to take your daughter out of ballet lessons today, but I am telling you to have a conversation with her that things are a little shaky here lately. They don't look too good right now. We're going to continue to do these things. Don't stress about it. But we want you to understand and see all the things that are going on around you. So if suddenly one day, and it will be just that quick, we have to start making very fast decisions and cutting things off and out I don't want it to be shock and awe for you that day because that's devastating for children. It's devastating for adults. But it is the world we're in right now. If this doesn't affect you at all and you think I'm a bunch of bunk in crazy town, <laughs> keep enjoying it. Good for you. The rest of us, which is the majority, aren't in that boat anymore. That's not a woe is me. This is called realism. This is the real world we are in. Even those that have been conservative, that have worked very hard, that have been you know, trying for years to be very self-reliant, and you, know, you would think this doesn't affect them so much. Oh, but it does. It affects our farm. It affects our children's lives. It affects any retirement we might have. It affects our health insurance. You even throw in the whole idea of health insurance, people with major pre-existing conditions losing their health insurance. Now what? Now some of you are gonna say, well, we're already in that boat and this is this and this is fair and a lead is this and this is that. I don't disagree with you. But what I want to remind you of, you're about to throw how many more people on top of the already existing problems? And you think that's sustainable? This is why I'm telling you, you need to today, if you have not, sit down and quickly look around and start thinking of ways to cut things back. Start today and tomorrow, this week, on the little things that can become very good habits that you may not feel, but overall, you they will save you a lot of time more importantly, they're going to save you money. This is a depressing thing to talk about. Probably always has been. But you know what? I always use this as an example, and I'm going to leave you with this. And this should be bone chilling. And I am pretty sure I have said this before on a video or two. I know I've said it to friends and family. I know I've said it in my Facebook group. And I know I've said it on live streams. I don't remember exactly the gentleman who said it, but in 2008, when we went through all that hullabaloo then, which was a red flag for you, by the way, that's the time frame that really changed our life. 
I was listening to a gentleman talk on the radio and he was a, a, a financial advisor, really smart, educated guy, very, 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 very educated. Uh, wasn't pretentious, wasn't political, but he was just talking about the times that we were in, the times that at some point would come to this country, whether it would be in 2020, 2030, we don't really know, but it's coming. And the conversation was comparing something happening now to 1929 and the whole idea is people then dealt with it so much better if you can believe that than anybody probably will today and the reason being number one 40 percent and that's the statistic at the time he gave around 40 percent of united states citizens were self-reliant in terms of they were major gardeners or they were major farmers. And in 2008, he said, do you know what the statistic is now? He said, 2% or less. Folks, that was in 2008. That was 13 years ago. Do you think that's changed? Do you think things have gotten better in terms of that? I hope so. But even if it's gotten just a little bit better, think about the comparison of that. I often tell people, I'm like a lot of people in Appalachia, particularly in Appalachia, they didn't even really know that a Great Depression was going on for a long time because they were already so depressed and so poor and living off of pinto beans and were barefoot. So they could ride it out. They weren't worried about when the next iPhone was coming on you know, coming out. They weren't worried about getting in their car and zooming to town to have the, the next uh, conference meeting with the office. That's not what life was then. So if you throw a 1929, and I'm using that as a generic example, I'm talking about anything, because we now know anything can happen, right? We've learned that the last two years. You throw that into modern times, with the mental status of so many people now, what do you think it's gonna be like? So I urge you today, take it from me. Anything can happen tomorrow. You can be warned of anything tomorrow. Your whole world can change in the next 24 hours. Mine too. We have to stay strong, we have to stay together, we have to stay prepared as much as we can, as I always tell you. It's time to, it's beyond time to take care of business. And when I say that, you need to pull your children aside, especially if they are 17, 18 and below. Figure out a way to pull them into the conversation and start talking about it and start putting them to the test in terms of being involved in doing something. I don't care if it's getting a cake mix of Duncan Hines out and they are the, I don't care. Get them doing things. Anything you can get them to do. No, little Johnny, we're not going to so-and-so pizza this Friday night. We're going to stay home and make homemade macaroni and cheese and, you know, have a bowl of beans. Do it. If you're doing it, do it more. It will make a huge difference. I totally believe that. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching our channel. Folks, we're living in uh, unprecedented times. And they are, because we can talk about times of the past, but they're not the same in terms of what we are facing today. Similar, but we've had it so good so long, the sting is gonna be a horrible bite this time. I hope this helps. Keep very, please, 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 for the love of everything good and for everybody right now, stay very, very busy. Because I assure you, if you are well to, good to go, you're going to be faced with helping others that aren't. Guaranteed. Love y'all. Let's get busy doing more stuff, right? More videos? Let's go get this milk strained and I will see you on the next video.